Hello, welcome to the Creative Industry Talk. This is House of Talent Television and my name is Eddie O'Killer. Welcome to the program. My guest this morning is a man who has been here, is the man who is a senior man in the industry, in the creative industry, is a legend by his own standing and by his own rights, the man who has been doing it. Jeremy Biamanzi is joining me again this morning together with Richard Tuanje who is going to be joining us in the show to discuss the one very important part of this creative industry talk and we're talking about how to foster creativity within our organization for business success how do we foster it we talked about it last week and jeremy is joining me again to have this discussion jeremy welcome back to the program thank you how are you doing no you have to spread love yes <laughs> you have to spread love thank you it's good to be here thank you so much for you're, having me you're once again. super welcome mm -hmm. first of all to start with jeremy how yeah. was your week Oh, I had a great week, yeah. um, lots of work, very busy, birthday week, so yes. I had lots of love from my family <laughs> and friends, so I had a good time. Yes, Yeah. and um, welcome back to the program. Talking about the show last week, we mm -hmm. got a lot of people who, you know, were very excited with yes. what you delivered on the show last week, and they were saying that they felt like this conversation needs yep. to continue mm -hmm. and they gave ideas on what yes. kind of topics to discuss and they says can you serialize this thing and make it continue going i mm -hmm. said well we will try our best okay and today on the show we want to discuss how do we foster creativity within our business mm -hmm. and i want to start with the first question Jeremy. Okay. first to give you the context of this entire discussion all right we're looking at the businesses mm -hmm. as an attractive way of doing things creativity mm -hmm. as in a business as an attractive way of doing things and we always looked at creativity as a way of inspiring people yeah into the product recruiting consumers into the product mm -hmm. introducing the brand to people and uh, somebody actually said jeremy needs to break down what is a brand and what is a product and what's the difference between the two mm -hmm. because we often talk about these things interchangeably but we don't yeah. know which one is more important and which one is not okay and so people want to break that down today and we say that creativity help us to find solutions mm -hmm. and also to find opportunities mm -hmm. that allows business to grow grow yes and uh, this week on the show we want to look at some of the reason where some people actually prosper in mm -hmm. business either individually or as a corporate or you know collectively mm -hmm. but they prosper when they think creatively when they think in a much more uh, better ways that make things easier for everyone yeah. to consume yeah. that product so to start with jeremy we want to just Start from that question that came mm -hmm. from the person that what is the difference between a brand mm -hmm. and a product? You have been doing this for a while now. Yeah. And you've worked with the, the likes of QG such and such, you yes. move along, started Nomad. Yes. And it's a known story altogether. You have a new journey starting right now. Yes. And then uh, somebody says, how does it mix the two things between being a creative mind and a pastor at the same time? <laughs> Those are the second question we're going to go to. But we'll start okay. with the difference between a brand and a product. Is there a difference? Okay, thank you. Yes, there certainly is a difference. Yeah. Um, but you could say that um, every product mm -hmm. is a brand in a way. Okay. Because what happens is that when you put out a product on the market, let's say you put out sugar, mm -hmm. people need to identify your sugar by a certain name. Yes. So when I walk into the supermarket and I ask for sugar, mm -hmm. they need to say, what sugar do you want? Mm -hmm. That's the first question they'll ask you. Or they'll bring you the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. So they'll bring you either Kakira sugar, or they'll bring you Chinyara sugar or any other sugar brand. Yes. Because that is the brand name. Yes. Okay. So when you think of a product, you have to think about how have you packaged the product. Yeah. And that packaging, that name that you've given it is yeah. the brand name. Okay. That's for the product. It can apply for a service as well. However, when you look at the word brand, last week I said that brand is a reputation. Yeah. Okay. So really, you can have a particular brand of sugar which has a certain reputation in the market. Yeah. yeah? And so that's how uh, the word brand can apply on, on, in both, on both uh, phases. Wow. So mm -hmm. Jeremy, when you say it will have a reputation, mm -hmm. how do we get to the reputation? Is it the fact that the name of this brand you're talking about has been overly talked about? Mm -hmm. I want to break it down to a border border man or to you know a taxi driver or mm -hmm. to a, a normal consumer down there mm -hmm. who consume some of this product yes is it how do we become a reputation 
or at what point does it become a reputation? Is it the more time is talked about? Mm -hmm. Is it the you know the more people know about it? Mm -hmm. How does it become a reputation? Okay, one of my favorite speakers, a gentleman called Chris Vallotton, yes, says your repetition becomes your reputation. Okay, okay, yeah. your repetition. Yeah. So when you do something continuously over and over again, that becomes your reputation. Yes. Now I'll give you an example. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to talk about milkshakes. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. So, I, I, I love Cafe Javas. Yes, okay. Yes, if, yes. if there's one restaurant where I can take a friend and know I'll get a good service, it is yes. CJ's. Yes. And every time we have a friend, I have a friend coming into the country, the yes. first place I'll take them to eat out is Cafe Javas because yes. I know yeah. that 9 out of 10 times, actually 10 out of 10 times, yeah. the food will come on time yeah. it will be hot yeah. it will be big yes. you know and they will not be disappointed yes. they have mastered the art of doing that consistently it yes. has become their reputation wow. so it has become their brand yeah so when an unfortunate story comes up yeah. whether true or not about something in their milkshake yes so many customers will go on twitter mm -hmm. and will defend them like they own the business yeah. they are not being paid mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. but they are, they know that this brand mm -hmm. stands for something and they are willing to lay down their reputation on social media yeah. to defend cafe javas yes. why they have a reputation they have a reputable brand yeah yeah wow well you've heard it from jeremy and thank you very much for joining us on the creative industry talk my name is edio Kela, jeremy Bemanzi. if you're just joining us we are live from all across the world we're live on facebook on youtube House of Talent TV on YouTube. Go to our studio and be part of that. Subscribe and be part of the family growing bigger and better. We're live on Facebook, of course, House of Talent Uganda. Go there and share that link as far as wide as possible. And of course, if you're a fan of Jeremy Biamanzi, what you need to do is go and tag all your friends and say he's now live and he's going to talk live to people. Jeremy is going to be speaking live to all of us when we talk about the brand and how, how do we foster creativity within our businesses, our organization, or even as an individual for business success. We're talking about business. Jeremy, we went into the lockdown. Yes. And when we went into a lockdown, a lot of businesses have suffered. Mm -hmm. Coming back from lockdown and coming back from the pandemic situation has been such a big challenge to so many businesses across the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses are closing down. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies are closing down. Mm -hmm. In Uganda, we have yes. seen, for example, this week where the traders are sitting down and saying rent is becoming rent and I cannot rent a space for my business anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not making money. Yeah. And the, the landlords are saying, well, I need my money because this is a space you have been occupying this space and I need the money. Mm -hmm. So there's a gridlock. I was watching the story coming from, from, from Nigeria is the yeah. same. South yeah. Africa is the same. You go to the north uh, part of Africa is the same. Mm -hmm. World over, this is the situation. How yes. can businesses begin to think about the creative ways to foster mm -hmm. creativity, using creativity to foster you know you know um what i would call success mm -hmm. to come through in this pandemic situation okay um one of the things i've been musing on yeah is what really is business yes <laughs> that's another good question actually yeah business really is an exchange yeah. of value yeah you have a product of value mm -hmm. uh and there is a market that needs that product okay so um one of my coaches who is actually my pastor says that the business is not a product yeah this is apostle moses mukisa yes. the business is the market so you can have a product and not have a market and you think you have a business you don't yeah, yeah? so usually what when when you say business is good yeah. it means that you have been able to transfer your product yeah. to the market and the value equivalent to that product has gone in the opposite direction yeah. so goods and services go that way mm -hmm. uh, financial resources equivalent to that product go that way mm -hmm. that's when you say you have done business yes okay so the question is what do you need for that exchange to happen yeah do you need an office do you need uh, an internet connection do you need a website mm -hmm. what do you need for value to exchange yeah. if you can crack that question you will know what you need to make your business successful. Mm -hmm. Now, um, ordinarily, people will look at a business as successful if it has premises. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that people get up in the morning, 
they leave their homes in their cars and they go to work. Mm -hmm. And then from work, after the, at the end of the day, they go back home. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now when lockdown happened, <laughs> that changed. People woke up in the morning and picked up their phones. They went to work yes. on their phones. Yes. They went to work <laughs> on their computers. Yes. They stayed in the same spaces at home. Yes. Uh, even their children went to school within yes. the same spaces. Yes. And that completely disorganized our understanding of yeah. work. Yeah. Okay? Because that meant that you can no longer call your wife and say, I'm still at work. <laughs> She's you, probably sitting next to you. She's probably yeah. sitting next to you, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so then it, it, it called for a change of mindset. Yeah. Because when you go to work, you're going to deliver your service. Yes. Patrick Pitatre likes to say yeah. that every person is an entrepreneur. Yeah. Every person is a business. Yeah. You are providing your value to your boss in your company yeah. for a salary yes. which he gives you monthly yes. or weekly depending on your arrangement. Yeah, yeah. So you are an individual business. Yes. Okay? Because so, you're providing service. Yes, because you're providing a service. It doesn't matter whether you have an employer's ID, employee's yeah. ID. Yeah. So now the thinking is that you have to say how do I get my service or my 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 product to my customer who is my boss? You know, do I have to go and sit for eight hours in his office and work there? Mm -hmm. Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. When you crack that question, you will know how to do this. Yeah. So definitely the pandemic yes. has, has disorganized, has disorganized um, very many yes. people's thinking, business in general. Yes, yes. And, and we have to be creative enough to adapt. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you are on the creative industry talk. My name is Eddie Okela once again and Jeremy Biemanzi. I think that I like what you're saying, Jeremy. Mm. And we want to hear from the people out there. What is your thought about the definition of business that Jeremy has just given? Do you understand when we talk about business? Sometimes the general term of business, mm. we forget that you yourself are a business. Mm. Now it brings me to a point of product, Jeremy. Mm. You have defined business mm -hmm. in a very simple term. Yes. Let's talk about the product. Mm -hmm. If I'm an individual, mm -hmm. am I a product or am I a business? Mm -hmm. Because that's another thing that people don't understand normally. Mm -hmm. You have worked in the creative industry for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You have been helping brands and, and you know and products go yeah. out there mm -hmm. or put their products there. So yes. Certainly you have a very good understanding of what you know businesses when we talk about business and you mm. explained it yeah. but what about product if an individual like okila am is okila a product or okila a business how do i even know to separate the two and how do i sell my services like you said patrick betray said that every time you go to work in the morning whether you have an id whether you are sleep a sweeper or you clean the toilets or you clean the washroom whatever it is you call your the kitchen yeah there is a certain money being given to you yes. in exchange for your service services there. yes yes yeah. and when you do that do that that's business already you yourself you're, you're already doing business but yeah. you often think that business is about trading you mm -hmm. know you know getting one product eggs to the market mm. i sell i come back that is it mm. is an individual a business or a product i think that uh, maybe i may throw in another word yes. every every, <laughs> every person yes. is building a brand whether you know it or not yeah and because you are building a reputation you have yeah. a reputation in the industry yeah. now if i have a reputation of being um efficient at work mm -hmm. efficiency is one of my brand values mm -hmm. It's a reputation I've built over time because yes. they know mm -hmm. if I give Jeremy this work, mm -hmm. he's efficient, he will get it out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that becomes my brand. Mm -hmm. Now, I am offering my service mm -hmm. to House of Talent. Mm -hmm. Okay? I may be an employee, but I'm offering my service. So I'm looking at myself as an individual brand yeah. offering my service to House of Talent yeah. for a certain fee. Yeah. That is how it, you need to look at yourself. So you build your reputation. With that in mind, yeah. you know, I must build an, a reputation of being efficient at work, good, a good communicator. I must be able to deliver value to my boss mm -hmm. so that he feels that, yes, I have an, an asset in, in Jeremy. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, what is the product or the service I'm delivering to my boss? Mm -hmm. 
he has hired me as a creative director, for example. Mm -hmm. That means he has certain expectations of me. Mm -hmm. Am I meeting those ex expectations? Am I exceeding them? Mm -hmm. That's the second thing, mm -hmm. yeah? So you have to think on those two planes, yes. yeah? There are some people who um, are very good at their work, yeah. but they're always late. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. So, so um, how do you deal with that, with such a person? Mm -hmm. You know, I like this person. He's such a good person, good character, but he'll always come late. I, I can't count on him to be here at 8 a.m. in the morning. So there are all those things you have to think about. And reliability is quite very important in business, yes. when you talk about business. Well, we are talking about how do we use creativity to foster, you know, success within our organization and for us to be able to make money. It boiled down to one thing, money. One time I listened to uh, Apostle Moses Mukisag, talk he used to have this thing every thursday that used to run on facebook during the main lockdown of mm. 2020 yes and uh, there was this one thing he says um if you want to know how things are bad or you want to know how well you are doing business wise mm. Mm. he says every time i used to go to Shoprite mm. or game i'll enter mm -hmm. the supermarket and there were 22 tills or 23 tills mm -hmm. in that supermarket it says you go to game now there will be people lining, yes. but there was, there's always a unique sound that is being made. Toot, toot, Peep, toot, yes. going, peeping. He says that peeping sound, every time it drops in, mm -hmm. there is money has entered. A product has been sold. Mm. Somebody has scanned that product. Money has gone to South Africa. Money has gone to South Africa. Mm. <laughs> or to somebody, <laughs> yes. As long as it, that sound, peep, money has gone. Mm. So he says, I kept paying attention. Then I realized that it was consistent and it wasn't stopping. So he mm. says, peep. Beep, beep. So he yes. says, that's the number. Then he says, let me stop and ask you, how many times does yours peep in a month or in a week <laughs> when you're thinking, if you have a product, how yes. many times is your product peeping mm. that thing? Mm. I started thinking about it. He says, actually, come to think about it. When you go to the supermarket, you never think about these things. Mm. But those are products yes. created by so yes. many people and they're being consumed by so many people. Mm -hmm. Is your product making its way into the supermarket? Certainly not. Mm. If it's not making it, it's what Jeremy is saying. How do you foster creativity to make sure that your gorillas or your banana crisps mm. or whatever or your chikapo that mm. you're making there is actually able to make its way there and also you can be part of that sound mm. going on. Yeah. Jeremy, that mm. said, before we take a break, mm -hmm. I want to take you straight to my next question, which is how can an organization improve creativity within itself for okay. success okay we've seen so many organizations failed mm -hmm. and so many individuals fail organization mm -hmm. like you said coming late is failure mm -hmm. meaning you cannot deliver yeah yeah i think it's it's it can be done in every department mm -hmm. but the good place to start is culture mm -hmm. because every organization has a culture organizational culture like we call it and so it's important to stop and think and say what is the culture of my organization and what have I developed? Mm -hmm. How do we work? Mm -hmm. What do people out there think of us? Mm -hmm. You know, what do our customers think of us as an organization? Mm -hmm. Everything that they think about you, the way you work, the way you operate, the way you deliver your services and your product really is the culture you've built. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you've had the very common saying that culture, it's a uh, strategy, it's culture for break culture eats strategy, strategy for, for breakfast, breakfast. Yeah. meaning that you can have all these strategies mm -hmm. to deliver a service but at the end of the day your culture rules the day it controls how you proceed mm -hmm. so how do you start one ask yourself what kind of culture do we have and you can get your staff members together and just begin to talk about that ask questions what is our attitude towards customers mm -hmm. um, do we have a, a culture of creativity? How can we foster a culture of creativity? Um, last week I talked about uh, the four zones. Mm -hmm. I talked about the creativity zone. Mm -hmm. I talked about the comfort zone. I talked about the um, costing zone. Yes. Um, and, and the comf comfort, creativity, creativity and cost costing, and, and there's a fourth one. Gro growth. Uh, no, 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 no. Growth. The, uh, the, 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 the staying zone? No, no, no. I'll, I'll remember. Yes. I'll remember. So, creativity zone, you attempt to think the way you've not thought before. Yes, yes. So, in that zone, that's where you challenge yourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, I can challenge myself and say, this is the work I do. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a creative director. This is how I approach it. How can I do it differently to make it more efficient? How can I use less time to do more? And I spend time thinking and I spend time reading online about different people in my field and how they do it. Those things help you change, you know? The other thing is to say, how can I be more efficient by working through others? You see? Because you can't win if you're doing everything yourself. You have to find a way of working through other people. Yeah. So those are some of the things, and we'll keep talking about it as we yeah. go along. Wow. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, Creative Industry Talk will continue, and Jeremy will be diving into the next question of how can we foster creativity in, an organization, in, in our organization or in an organization for business growth. If you have an organization, Jeremy has already touched it, but what culture do you have in that organization? If you're starting a company and your company is coming up, perhaps you need to start with a culture that is, this is how we are going to operate here as a company. This is what we're going to do. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this coffee break. And Jeremy will be talking more about that. This is a coffee break. people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They have moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes, yes. Me, I keep saying yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes. Welcome back from that break and of course when we went for a break you heard what Faisal and Musta was talking about the creative spaces in Kampala, creative space in Uganda. It's the first time we're actually having creative spaces. Jeremy, welcome yes. back to the program. Thank you. We're talking about creative spaces. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, um, people could not get into restaurants to sit and do work unless you dress in a certain way. But uh, creative people like to dress in a certain way yes. and express themselves in a certain way. They have to be in a, what most are called a zone. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, when they're in that zone, they look like uh, they are not people who can be accepted in certain areas. Yeah. And so there are now creative spaces in Uganda. Yeah. Talking of that as a business, mm -hmm. what do you think about the new creative spaces where the hub has come up with a place where people mm -hmm. can go and sit and create yes. and think creatively and come yes. up with a product? Faizo is saying, I've bought a whole island of 100 acres. <laughs> I'm going to put, you can leave Kampala and you go and sit there and brainstorm and speak with the wilds and whatever it is and come up with a product. What do you think of that as a creative person? I absolutely love it. I Why do you think we should have that? I think it's great because um, it fosters a culture of, of, of creativity. Mm -hmm. And if you create a space which enables people to think and thrive, mm -hmm. that's a bonus. Um, before I started working officially, mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of freelance work. Mm -hmm. And as a young freelancer, my laptop was on my back. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have... A, an internet connection. I didn't have an office desk. Um, it was difficult for me to work at home. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I would go and sit in a restaurant, buy some tea or uh, breakfast, and ask for a Wi-Fi password. Mm -hmm. And then I would sit there and have my breakfast slowly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, as, as I, I did yeah. my work and I sent work to clients yeah, and everything, yes, yes. you know. But before long, it lunchtime, mm -hmm. it would be lunchtime, mm -hmm. you know. And they you would have bring, to be forced to eat also. They would bring a lunch menu. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Yes, so, yes. so when you find a, a space mm -hmm. where people can come and sit, mm -hmm. 
and pay for a full day. 10,000, I'm told. Yes, yes, you see. it's That is creativity. Yeah. Because the owner of this building or the owner of this space knows mm -hmm. that people, there's a, there's a certain segment of the market that yeah. can't afford to rent a premises yeah. per square meter yeah. or 10 square meters or 100 square meters yeah. Yeah. And, and, and pay monthly yeah. and bring their own furniture, their own internet connection, carpeting, yeah. Yeah. light and everything, a working bathroom and then lunch for, for staff members. Yeah. So they think about it creatively and they say, how many people can this space take? Mm -hmm. 100 people per day. Okay, good. If each of those people pays 10,000 per day, and they come and have access to the internet and a nice chair and a desk yeah. and a good environment where they can concentrate and deliver. Yeah. That is brilliant. That is creativity in the workplace. Wow. Jeremy, we went for a break. We were asking you a question about how can you, how can you, the person, or can me, the person, or can we, the people, you know, foster creativity within an organization mm -hmm. for business success. Yeah. Most times organizations are known for killing people's creativity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're saying you're not being more productive, mm -hmm. but your productivity is severely limited by the fact that the person who is or the culture of the organization mm -hmm. does not have room for people to be creative. How can we start to be creative to allow success to come so that if I work in that organization, I'm able to ask for salary, which is commensurate to my service being given to the organization. Mm -hmm. As opposed to me demanding for more salary, I'm sure you've been employing people, and there are people who are demanding for more money, yet their value, what mm. they are giving to yeah. the company, is not commensurate to what they are asking. Yes. Yes. I think it's a case of, um, as an individual, yeah. you should be in a space which allows you to be creative. If you have chosen to be in a specific workplace and that is not accepted, that flexibility is not accepted, yeah. then unfortunately you have to subject yourself to the rules that govern that organization. Yeah. You can't bring your own way of working in a particular organization. Mm -hmm. What you can do, however, mm -hmm. is you can show your employer that with this kind of flexibility you're able to deliver more value mm -hmm. to the organization mm -hmm. and save them more time. Mm -hmm. For example, um, there's been a lot of conversation about working from home. Mm -hmm. It has its advantages and its disadvantages. And as a result of working from home, so many people have come up with all sorts of apps mm -hmm. that they can use to connect with, works, with workmates who are working virtually. Yeah. And that's how Zoom and all these other uh, uh, softwares have come up. Yeah. But what that does mm -hmm. is that when somebody is working from home, if they can be productive, it saves the organization a lot. It saves you lunch. You don't have to buy lunch for the employees. They're at home. It will even save you space, you know, because when you have people in a specific space, they need to eat, they need to use the bathroom, they need to, you have the SE, the SE has to be running the whole day. There are certain costs it, save you. it saves you as, as an organization. So you have to ask yourself, what is the trade-off? You know, having these people in this space together or having them working from wherever they work, and being more efficient. Mm -hmm. Those are the things you have to discuss and agree on. Well, um, Jeremy, that's a good one. But the point here, there's a certain also <laughs> situation we're dealing with where a person is working from home and their productivity is not coming very low. They're not being very productive. Mm -hmm. You're waiting for this work and the you know, task given to them to be delivered and mm -hmm. it's not coming on time. Yeah. And the, on the other side of the fence mm -hmm. is the client who is saying, I need this at this time. Yes. I don't have it in this time. Your contract will be cancelled or we shall defy your contract mm -hmm. or we shall deduct from your contract. Yep. How do you deal with that? And there's that. The organization have many organizations haven't yet you know sort of like figure that out on mm -hmm. how to deal with it mm. big corporations perhaps are doing that yeah. how do you make sure that the person that you are employing that you want to work out from home continue to be more creative and more productive mm -hmm. in their workspace from their sitting room mm -hmm. without them having to cheat you the hours that you're paying them mm -hmm. a week or a month so the question is, do you pay for time or you pay for output? <laughs> That's another <laughs> thing. Because they have to that point where they say, you are not seeing you in the office in the morning. And yes. the person is saying, but I have come and finished my job. When I start at 4 o'clock, what you are interested for is I have finished this job. Yeah, because you see, I can come to work. Yes. And this is what happens in, in many offices. Yeah. Somebody walks in. 8 or 8.15. Or someone's supposed, supposed to be at like 8.30. Yes. They'll come in like 8.45. Yeah. Then they will make the morning, they will make tea yeah. between 8.45 and 9 mm -hmm. 
okay? Then they will send the tea girl or they will run to the nearest supermarket to buy some samosas and chapati, mm -hmm. okay? Then they will have tea. Then those days, people used to read the morning papers. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they'll read the morning yes, newspaper, yes, yes, yes. okay? Or they'll go onto Facebook mm -hmm. or they'll go to ESPN mm -hmm. to check the results of Leeds versus Manchester United Maybe previously <laughs> and, you know, and follow what's happening and yes. rewatch the highlights of the game yes. and have conversation among themselves. Before they start working Before on your time. Now they came at 8.30. Yes, yes. In that time, they've yes. used the internet, yes. they've made tea, yes. they've turned on the computers. They've gone to the washroom and They've gone to the flashed. washroom and flashed. Yes. And then they will start work. Yes. 8.30. 9.30. Yes. 9.30 or 10. One hour of just One a hour fair, later. Yeah. later. Okay? Now, in some government offices, I'm told, people even put their jackets on their seats and, and go away. go away and do other things. You see? We've seen those. So ones. they say, ah, oh, he's in the building. Yes. He's in the building. <laughs> you know? Okay? Yes. So now, uh -huh. that uh -huh. is organizational culture. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can have somebody in. He has clocked in. By this person, when he arrives, he clocks in and says, I was here at 8.15. Because but the culture says you log in you, whenever you, you get log in. Yes. But for one and a half hours, that person has been doing everything else except what brought them to work. Wow. So how do we deal with this going forward? Alternatively, yes. you have somebody who is seated at a computer at 7 a.m. in his pajamas at yes. home. He hasn't even bathed, he hasn't brushed his teeth, yeah. but he's doing, doing work yes. at home. And files are coming. Files are coming, work is coming in, yes. you know, yeah. and the person is at home. You see, those are two categories of people. Yeah. You can also have another category of somebody who is at home but is struggling to deliver. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this person has not mastered the skill of self-productivity and self-discipline. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a balance between those, those things. Every individual needs to learn how to lead themselves. If you can lead yourself, one, and if you can communicate very well, I really think you can work away from home. But if you can't do those things, you need to come into the office and have a supervisor standing over you and saying, keep going, 30 minutes, when can I get this? How far have you gone with this and what? And so it's a combination of all those things. And every one of us is, is learning how to be more efficient. Yes and to lead ourselves. Yes. We are all on a journey. Yeah. So as, an, as a boss, yeah. you have to be able to tell and say, where is my team? Um, where I used to work previously, there were people who, some people were very efficient at working from home mm -hmm. and they loved it. While others really needed to come into the office to be in that space too. To work. To work. Wow. Jeremy, as an individual, how can I foster more creativity to honest success for myself? Given the perspective and the context that you have placed the work culture within an organization, the things that you've just explained now, mm -hmm. and I've been listening to you, and I'm wondering as an individual, mm -hmm. things have not been, I've fallen short of yeah. the glory of the things that you're talking mm -hmm. about right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I have cheated the organization here, mm -hmm. I've not been faithful to the organization, but they're paying yes. my salary. Yeah. But now, lockdown came. Mm -hmm. And because the president kept saying work from home and many other heads of states kept telling people work from home and encouraging organization to work from home mm -hmm. to avoid the pandemic that we're in. And now some people, mm -hmm. organizations woke up and said, hey, wait a minute. Actually, Mr. Killer all this time wasn't delivering. So mm -hmm. Mr. Killer is effective as this man. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the company will no longer be in need of your services. Mm -hmm. And then I wake up and I realize this is now real. I never thought about it. Then there's a Jeremy X who has been there mm -hmm. and the organization is saying, Jeremy, uh, I think we have realized that, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, B3 is doing more work than you are doing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are cutting down on people. So mm -hmm. also effective this time of mm -hmm. the year. And for the, this is going to be your last salary. And she's so, very efficient. I yes, very efficient. She's now <laughs> taken three of her jobs. Three people are now one person. Mm -hmm. And I'm struggling. So I, eventually now I hear you talk now on the creative industry talk. Mm -hmm. And I want to think about creativity. Most times people think that creativity is just about thinking and designing things. Mm -hmm. And putting things together and making it look beautiful. But the thinking of an individual of how can I make my life better? Mm. How can I stop drinking? How can I stop uh, smoking? How can I stop using substance to be able to make me become creative to work? Mm. You know, something else has taken the space that God has given you that has been free for you to think. 
it's the question I pose to you mm. as an individual. Mm. How can I foster more creativity to harness success if I've not been doing it? Okay. Um, one of the things that um, we used to have, and you're, you're no stranger to the advertising industry, yeah. we used to have what we call a traffic manager. Mm -hmm. And this person's job was to make sure that they log all the work, mm -hmm. distribute it, and follow up and make sure it comes out. Mm -hmm. That is what software does nowadays. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's what software does. Okay. You know, yeah, there are so many, so many uh, softwares yeah, online yeah. that do that. And with the lockdown, they even increased. Yes. So you just punch in all the work, yes. you know, and put in the deadlines, yeah. put in the contact people. In the software, it shows you a timeline with graphs and everything and can give you daily reports. Mm -hmm. And you get your team to log in so they can see who is doing what and they can log their progress daily. Yes. yes immediately they have eliminated the, the person who was doing the traffic, the, guys. The traffic manager mm -hmm. in the office. You see what wow. I mean? Wow. And when you think about it, by the way, you yes. see all these traffic policemen on our streets? Yes. Ideally, they should have been replaced by traffic lights. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Yes, yes. But the reason why they have not been is yes. because of the yes. indiscipline of the drivers. Yes, yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So likewise, in the workplace, yeah. you have those softwares, mm -hmm. but if you don't have disciplined employees, mm -hmm you will still need traffic men or mm -hmm. a, a traffic manager on the road yes. in the workplace now yes, yes. so individual discipline yes. and self leadership is very important wow. and uh, i don't say this as somebody who has attained it mm -hmm. because every one of us is on a journey mm -hmm. growing every day mm -hmm. the discipline of execution mm -hmm. of work in time mm -hmm. The discipline of communicating clearly and in time. The discipline of thinking creatively, creatively and coming up with something that's going to stand out. All those are the challenges we face every day, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing, I believe, is that as an individual, mm -hmm. you must ask yourself, am I adding value to this organization? Wow. Well, you are on a creative industry talk. Jeremy Bemanzi is giving us tips on how we can make ourselves better. We are talking about how to foster creativity within our organization for business success. And the topic of the discussion today is up there. We're looking at how can we make it better? How can we do it better? No one is better placed than the people who have been doing it. Jeremy has been in advertising world for a long time. He left campus and that is what he studied and is what he's been doing. You know, he's the pastor, but this has always been where his bread comes from. Pastoring is about helping the flock to find themselves and to continue moving. It is not where the money comes from. The money comes from creativity, which means Jeremy still has to be more productive and be able to do this. What about you with sitting home? What is your understanding of these things? How are you pulling yourself out of it? We're talking about a situation where a pandemic has brought in and people have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you're one of those people who are sitting at home wondering what to do with yourself. There are many challenges. Every day we have challenges and somebody is working with a lot of things. If you're not creative in the way that you handle that challenge, it becomes very difficult. Creative Industry Talk is going to go for a break. And when we come back, Jeremy will dive into the three questions giving you Given his experience as an advertiser, as an hard man, as a person who has been developing brands and managing reputations of big corporations, what lessons can we pick from him? What advice can we pick from him? And secondly, and finally, Jeremy will be talking about how to promote creativity within our businesses, within self, within our families, within our churches, <laughs> within our, you know, streets. He's talked about how traffic men that sometimes overrides, you know, you know, you know, traffic lights because the traffic man either wants to be a little bit more relevant. Because I've seen that situation. We'll be right back after this break and Jeremy will dive into it. And that will bring us to the end of the show. Stay right there, I'll be right back after the break. It is the Creative Industry Talk. Welcome back to the program. My name is Edio Killer, and in the studio is Jeremy Viemanzi. We are talking about how can we use or how can we foster creativity within our organization, within ourselves, 
to be able to make our businesses successful or as an individual to be successful. Jeremy, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Um, Jeremy, given yes, your experience over the years, mm -hmm. you have been working for some time now. Yes. And you have helped brands for some time. You've mm -hmm. interacted with some of the most beautiful brands we have yeah. in Africa and across the world. And you've been giving service to them. Even I, from here in Kampala, the comfort of your home. And you, of course, have, uh, you know, built experiences and, you know, challenges. You've seen challenges and navigated some of the turbulences that came with these brands. Yes. How can we use your experience or how do you help us to facilitate the process of creativity so that I can be more, become more successful in trying to use my creative works to make more money mm -hmm. or use myself to become more relevant to businesses or to individuals or to services going forward is basically the question I'm bringing to you. Over the years, you've had that. But how do you facilitate or how do we facilitate creativity? Okay, is that for an individual? Start from individual. Go to families. Go to societies. Because this is going on. And take us through to the nation and to the corporation to the nation. Okay. Yeah. So, quite simply, and I, I really like to make put things very simply. Yeah. It is to deliver to the expectation. Mm -hmm. Because everyone creates an expectation. Mm -hmm in someone mm -hmm. when i put myself out there and say i'm offering this service mm -hmm. and a person pays me mm -hmm. that money that i have received creates an expectation on the other side mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. there's an expectation of a good service mm -hmm. there's an expectation of a timely service mm -hmm. now if i fail to meet those expectation mm -hmm. uh, those expectations immediately mm -hmm. i am falling short yeah so quite simply mm -hmm. It is to meet and exceed the expectation of the person you're serving. Wow. That's what it is. But how do I meet the expectation of the person I'm serving, Jeremy? Mm. How do I start? I don't know. Not very many people know how to start that journey. Mm -hmm. But certainly, you have been through certain processes that you can say, this is where you can start from. Yeah. And this is how you can go forward from here. Would you want to share some of those small steps that I can start from when I'm not aware that these are the steps I need to go through. Mm -hmm. Maybe simple or complex or yeah. not complex, yes. Okay, the first thing I've learned mm -hmm. is that people buy from people. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's, that's, that's a reality. Yeah. Even if I'm selling a product to an organization, mm -hmm. behind that organi organization is a person I'm interacting with. Yes. Yeah? So, if I'm going to sell you a product, mm -hmm. I need to connect with you. Alright? When I connect with you, mm -hmm. That connection enables us to do business. Okay? Now, if we are going to do business, there's an expectation I have built in you. Mm -hmm. And there's an expectation you have built in me. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, for example, let's assume I am selling you a book. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I come to you and say, I'm selling you this book, Man on Top. Mm -hmm. This book will teach you the following things. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I'm interested in that book. So I give you the book and you pay me for it. Okay? So the book that you've taken, you have an expectation of what that book is going to do in your life when you read it. And um, I have received money from you equivalent to that book, which, is, which was an expectation I had. That when I give you my book, you're going to give me this money. So in order for that relationship to be efficient, you both need to deliver... To that expectation you know for example if i give you this book and you go and read it and you're like ah i didn't pick anything from this book this it was book. a waste of money mm -hmm. the expectation has been let down wow. you see so quite simply in the workspace mm -hmm. deliver as expected deliver as expected and wow. if you do that consistently over time <laughs> they'll get to know you as a person who delivers yeah tell me when you are talking my mind was racing around mm -hmm. and i was looking at how many times I have ordered for something, mm -hmm. be it food in the restaurant, yes. and it comes with an attitude towards me. Mm -hmm. And when it comes with an attitude towards me, I start to think about, I'm paying for this service. Yeah. You can't treat me like, it's like you're doing me a favor. Yeah. And then I've ordered for things online, mm -hmm. and the products come, and the packaging is not okay, it doesn't look very okay, 
and then my expectations because what I saw as a picture that has mm. been presented to me was really this and then when I put the two together and I weigh them I feel so disappointed yes and then I begin to ask myself so what 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 how do I deal with this? Mm. I, I recently was looking for a particular product mm -hmm. to be taken to the hospital. It was so difficult to find and I was so stressed. And then this gentleman, finally we got the product. Yeah. The product was more expensive than I expected. Mm -hmm. But when he delivered the product, mm. he, he put some human touch to it. He said mm. something, he says, um, when you, if you are happy and finally, when your human being gets out of the hospital, mm. I hope you will remember us that we are the people that were able to get this to you mm -hmm. when you couldn't get it from anywhere. Yes. And you didn't look at the value, you didn't look at the yes. money, but look at the things we did for you. Yes. I've been thinking about it, and now you've just touched something very yes. interesting. That people buy from people, yeah. and the people buy because you are touching them. Yeah. Jeremy, mm. there are so many people out there mm. who don't even know that respecting a customer is important. Mm -hmm. I one time had a person who says, who said that I can find somebody else who can give you the same, who can give me the same service. Mm. If you think my, I'm the one giving you the money. If you don't want my money, okay, I'll mm. give you my money with my condition. Mm. Then I felt like, okay, maybe my service is not good for this person. Yeah. So I was, I made, they made me feel so bad. But years down the road, two, three years down the road, the person comes to me back come back to me and says, uh, Eddie, I want you to give me the service. Then I said, but the last time you said my service was so bad. Mm. There's this whole thing that the person who gives you the money is king mm. and not the customer. Mm. But we have had this old saying that customer is king. Yes. How do we address that going forward? Yeah. To avoid me losing a customer who is giving me a good service mm -hmm. just because I am proud mm. and to avoid me losing a good product yeah. just because I am proud. Mm -hmm. How do we address this going forward? How can you help the person who is confused outside there and probably is annoyed and is about to fire the only customer who can continue to give him yeah. consistent businesses to go forward to develop yes. the business going yes. forward? Yes. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I understand your question. I think you understand because in the ad industry, they always say that advertise that people in the, the advertising firms just take money. They don't do anyone. Yeah. And all of us who are outsourced from out here to give the service to ad agencies yes. always feel like we're, we're not treated well. Yes. You get our money, you first use it, you mistreat us, but we're the one making you get that money. Mm. That, dream, that fight has always been there. Mm -hmm. And how do we bridge that gap between the two? Mm. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. You see, you, first of all, there's needs for education. Mm -hmm. People need to, there is a need for education. And in, with the advertising industry, we, we have a big challenge because people always feel like they can get it cheaper elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know. And with apps like Fiverr, mm -hmm. uh, and there's another one called, I think, I forget the name, People Something. Yes. People are able to go online and find the service online, mm -hmm. pay for it, and the person will deliver in three days. And sometimes a local person is not able to deliver within that timeline. Mm -hmm. And so you find that you're competing against people online mm -hmm. who do what you do and sometimes even do it cheaper. Yeah. The only problem though mm -hmm. is that you're not sure what you will get. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody is not accessible to you, you know, mm -hmm. it can be a problem. Somebody can disappear. Uh, somebody can respond to you after several days and you miss a deadline after you have paid them. Uh, and all those are challenges you face with mm -hmm. dealing with an unknown face behind a computer. Yeah. So for the people who are local, the interaction builds a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, people buy from people. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to foster a relationship with the person, it helps you. One of the things we say is that... Um, um, you and your customer mm. are in a relationship, your partners. Mm. Don't treat them like they're just giving you a service and you walk away. Mm. Build a relationship and let it grow over time. Wow. Yeah. Jeremy, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a very interesting um, conversation we are having. I want to say this, that um, there is, there's this new 
thing that has come up. So many young people are becoming more creative. We're channeling so many people out of universities, all across, mm -hmm. and colleges, and they're all coming to the market space. Mm -hmm. But there is no employment in the market space, mm -hmm. and no one is creating employment mm -hmm. for themselves. Mm -hmm. And some of the things we're talking about here simply needs a person to be more creative to say, if the apps are competing with me, how mm. can I defeat the application that is made that allows the, the person in the US to interact with my customer here yes. much easily yes. and take business away from me? Yes. And then how can I, me who is here, locally here, I can call Jeremy, I can go to Jeremy's sitting room or, mm. go, you know, and say, let's have coffee. Mm -hmm. But how do I become this? And then you realize that many of these children or many of these young people, many of the people who are being channeled right now, mm. can't create, mm -hmm. can't think creatively. Creative thinking severely limited. Mm. I want you to share with us mm -hmm. how can these people who are now content creation has become content creation. In mm. fact, everybody's talking about I mean content creation, content creation. But then you say, so, okay, what content are you creating, mm -hmm. and for what solution, for what problem are you creating the content? Then they say, ah, I was just in the you know creative hub the other day, and I saw how people are walking around, and I thought maybe if I come up with a a bicycle tires, I can make them, you know, do this. Then it says, but the bicycle tires will mm -hmm. need the second wheel to ride, and mm -hmm. that person will need energy to ride, ride the bike. It. Without the energy and yeah. the cardio respiratory capacity yeah. being strong enough, they can't ride the bike. Then they start saying, uh, I don't think you understand my thinking. How do we help these young people mm -hmm. to become more creators mm -hmm. given your experience yeah. over the years, as opposed to depending? on what is already there that mm. is not enough for all of us mm. to feed from. So, <laughs> that's funny. Um, you see, it's, the industry is changing. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that it's changing is, um, maybe I can start with a story. Yesterday I had a class. Mm -hmm with my friend John Babirukamu yes. on digital marketing. Oh, it finally happened. Yes, it happened yesterday. <laughs> and we had yeah. so many people on the call and yeah. we were teaching. John yeah. was doing most of the teaching. Yes. Um, for me, I was there to gather the people and, yeah. you know, because of yes. the relationships I have. Yes. And so he, he was teaching about digital marketing. Yeah. And most of the people who came to the class realized they didn't know what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. Because people have been using the term digital marketing, yes. digital, I mean social media marketing yeah, and yeah. what I'm, I'm an influencer, I'm an influencer yeah. and everything. <laughs> and so John comes on and blows us out of the water yes. and shows us that you guys are kidding. You yes. don't know what you're talking about. Yes. One of the things that was discussed is the need for every business to have online presence in form of a website. Yes. And one of the things he said is that there are so many platforms online where you can go mm -hmm. and build a website online. Mm -hmm. Most of these, web, these websites advertise their service as the ability to build a website without knowing how to code. Mm -hmm. So you have Wix.com, you have WithoutCode.com, all these websites come up. Yeah. So the deception is for a business owner to think yes. that he can go online and build his website on this portal mm. because he has been told yes. that it's easier and cheaper. Yes. And then he goes there and he realizes, my God, he doesn't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what dimensions yeah, that is. Yeah. Is that the, he doesn't know the, 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 the DPI of an image online, how yes. to get a clear picture. Yes, yes. He He's absolutely overwhelmed by that yes. process. Yes. Then he goes back yeah. to a web designer and says, can you help me do this thing? Yes. And that guy will come on that very platform and do it for him. Yes. What does that say? There are competences that people have developed over time. Yeah. You can't cut them out. Yeah. Even with machine learning, you yeah. will still need a person because people run machines. Yes. You see? So you need to know that in order to win, yeah. you need to depend on people. Yeah. You can't do everything yourself. Yeah. Wow. Jeremy, finally, how do we promote creativity, creative thinking among ourselves? Mm -hmm. Business owners. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, consumers. Mm -hmm. Because as a consumer, I need to be thinking creatively mm -hmm. before I can buy mm -hmm. this product. Yeah. Do I need this product really yes. now? Yes. COVID-19 has hit me. My salary is not as good as it used to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not earning this. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we are buying products that we don't need to impress people who actually don't care. I've mm -hmm. seen people buy it, And I keep telling people, you don't need that. 
I take time to buy a suit and when I buy a suit it's quite expensive and when I wear it mm. I want to make sure that I go and work out in the gym and when I wear this suit is always looking new mm. to many people but it's because I I I'm, I'm, I'm being creative I'm being I'm being creative to maintain my suit so I keep looking new I don't yeah. wear it every day yeah now many people don't know this how yeah. can we promote creative thinking Jeremy our education system mm. teachers or oh, it has always taught us one thing mm -hmm. you know i give you this knowledge the way it is like john was saying yes. i give you the way it is yes give it back to me the way it is yes if you change it and put your own thinking in it i'll mark you wrong mm -hmm. all through our education from primary school from nursery school to secondary school to universities we are just giving then when i come out of university and now putting on zeus and my lawyer putting everything then it says we are looking for people who can think outside the box mm. and then all of a sudden the light bulbs of my head yes i go into a room for an interview mm. i don't know what creative thinking is yeah i've never promoted creative thinking in mm -hmm. my business yeah so in other words i don't know mm -hmm. how do we promote creative thinking going mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. given all the background and all the challenges opportunities that we've discussed on the show today okay this is let me share some experiences yes create a culture mm -hmm. of continuous learning mm -hmm. or a culture of continuous improvement in your workspace yes I am a member of Worship Harvest and we have what we call a culture of leadership mm -hmm. but also a culture of continuous improvement. Yes. That means that everybody in the workspace must look at themselves as a leader mm -hmm. and they must learn what it means to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Leaders find solutions, they don't present problems. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what happens in in a workspace is typically people exist and present problems. Yes. So you have a boss and he has hired you to solve a certain problem. But you, you keep coming to him to report that problem. Mm -hmm. For example, the computer cannot start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I can't find out to connect the mouse. Yes. You know? Yes. You keep presenting problems to him. Yes. Yeah? Um, yet, what you're supposed to be doing is uh -huh. finding solutions. Mm -hmm. So my wife used to tell me, she used to work in a certain organization. Um, and in that organization, she, they had a very tough boss. Mm -hmm. This was her first workplace out after school mm -hmm. whenever she went with he to him with a problem he mm -hmm. told her bring me five solutions to this these problems you are asking yeah. me to solve this. don't come to me with a problem mm -hmm. come and tell me this is the problem these are five possible solutions to this problem every time you come to me that's one thing you can do that is a culture of leadership in there mm -hmm. that you're creating mm -hmm. okay so if i come to you and you're my boss and i say my computer has blacked out I can't print this document I you can't have told print, me to print now. I can't print this document you've told me to print. Or there is no toner. Yes. Or the, the, the cartridge is empty. Yes. Yeah? Um, you, should, I, you should come to me with five solutions to that problem. Mm -hmm. So you come to me and said, I, I tried to print the document and I realized the, comp the printer was faulty. Mm -hmm. I have made this call to this person to come and deliver. Or I have called these suppliers. This is how much they charge for this ink. Mm -hmm. Uh, which of these people should I go with? I've spoken to accounts mm -hmm. and this is, they say they have some petty cash, they can afford to spend this on this at this yes. time. Or oh, I have sent an office cleaner to go and print the document from yes. out as we wait for this guy. As we wait for this guy. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so in yeah. other words, you, yeah. you have not put a roadblock in yes. front of you, yes. but you have showed your boss right there yeah. that you have thought of all these options. Yes and you are finding ways of delivering yeah. a printed document to him yeah. instead of excuses wow. that's a culture of leadership wow. okay number two a culture of continuous improvement yes. is where you are always challenging the status quo and asking yourself how can we do it better mm -hmm. i started leading the church media team uh, in march mm -hmm. this year and i have experienced creatives, videographers, people to run vmix, animators, graphic designers, pro presenter, and all these people, you know? And we used to broadcast online mm -hmm. on, and we still do, we broadcast on YouTube, we broadcast on uh, Vimeo, we broadcast on, you know, there was Facebook and, and the like. Yes, and before the whole situation yeah, happened. Yes. yes, but now we are on Twitter spaces also. Now we are on Instagram. You see, we keep pushing the limits and say, how can we get this content on as many channels as possible? 
we got to join Twitter Spaces after our pastor was invited by Robert Kabushenga to Twitter Spaces. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the numbers and we're like, wow, this thing is so popular. It's a new space. We didn't know about it. Yes. But we, we found There was way. Twitter Live and Twitter Streaming yes. before they changed. Uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. So we found a way of getting our live stream, our church stream mm -hmm. on Twitter Spaces every yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Did I do it myself? No. But I have a competent person on the team mm -hmm. who led himself and said, you know what, I can crack this thing. My role is to lead the team, to encourage them, to charge them, and make sure that they get the work done and yeah. everybody wins. Yeah. So a culture of continuous improvement saying, what can we do better? You know, the other time we had this problem, how can we avoid it this time? That's how you change your organization. So number one, a culture of leadership. Number two, a culture of continuous improvement. Number three, a culture of continuous learning. Everyone in the workspace should be a student. Yeah. Everyone should be reading something, learning something, yeah. teaching something to someone because you don't want your mind to, 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 to grow, I, I would say probably grow old, I don't know what other word to use. <laughs> or to be locked in to the be, things yes, you know to, and not think about yeah, the things that be, you don't know. Yeah, to be it. locked into a certain way of thinking. Yeah. And like I said last week, referring to uh, you and muscles and going to the gym and working yeah. out, yeah. the brain is a muscle. So you always have to keep exercising it. Yeah. That's why playing games exercises your mind. You know, I was having a conversation recently with some leaders and one of our leaders, our pastor was saying, playing matter to help him think, think strategically and yes. think quickly. Yes. Playing chess. Yes. If you introduce your children to chess, yes. it helps them think strategically and yes. think faster yes. and make decisions quicker. Yeah. So sometimes if you have not exposed yourself to that kind of thinking you yeah. find yourself thinking slower taking yeah. a long time to make decisions <laughs> and yeah. it just works against you wow you've talked about playing matters and playing cards i was the masterful at playing that we even played for money yes now crossword puzzles yes mm -hmm. years down the road that's how i was launched into my strategy as a strategist we started to play this card. So when I went for training mm. to be, a, you know, a behavior change communication strategist, mm. that's when I realized they started to bring matter to, to play and we're playing points. Mm -hmm. And they said the one to reach 300 mm. Mm, mm. will be the one to win or the one the lowest point to yes, win. Yes. Trust me, it taught me so many things that I know today that I didn't know. Creative thinking and challenging my mind to always think. Jeremy, I want you to pick that book as we close the show. Mm -hmm. There's a book right behind you, written by you, called yes. Man on Top. Mm -hmm. That is the work of a creative person. If you put that book, actually, you can see it from Jeremy's holding it. This yep. is the writer of the book, Jeremy himself, and this book has been around for some time. Mm. Now, I want to ask you about this book, mm -hmm. the design of this book. Yeah. Let's start from the first of the book. Yeah. Can you explain to us what was going in your mind and what creative processes did you go through to create this book that you all that you later all sold to us? And I don't know how many people have bought the book and read the book mm -hmm. because that right there lies into the lies the answers to what we're saying or the connectivity to the answers we're talking about. The discussion we're talking about here, saying how to foster creativity within an organization for business success. Mm -hmm. This was your business. Yes, you foster creativity to yes. create these things. Mm -hmm and you brought these things out. Can you please take us through that as we close the show? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so thank you. Man on Top really is a book about a young man growing up. Yes, a young man, Jeremy Gemans. Yes, <laughs> and uh -huh. lessons mm -hmm. that I have learned and I'm still learning yes. on the journey towards yes. manhood. Yeah. So this book is really a collection of those lessons. Okay. So the thinking behind the design is really about how can I make this book stand out mm -hmm. on a shelf in a restock mm -hmm. and how can it get somebody to pick it up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is attractiveness. That yes. is attractive to yes. me and then I'll pick it. Yes. Uh -huh. So the idea, of course, the cover, the cover is a person, yes. a, a young man, as you can see, yes. with muscles yes. and, you know, looking can we also, have a wide shot so we can see this? you know, uh -huh. looking all so cool and everything. So that was really, this is really what the cover is yes. about. Yes. But then the title of the book, Man on Top, is very controversial. Yes. Actually, my, <laughs> my, my editor told yes. me, Jeremy, there is no way you yes. can call your book Man, man on top. top. Yes. And I said, no, I'm actually going to call it Man on Top yes. because I think I can sell it. Yes. 
okay i think i can sell it and so the first task for me yes. was to define man on top yes. away from the definition it already has that we already know yes. Yes. yes so for me a man on top is a man that is faithful dependable and responsible yeah so i began a campaign about saying you're a man on top you're yeah. faithful you're responsible yeah. you're productive yeah yeah so every man has within them a desire to be those three things yes. to be faithful to be productive and to be responsible yeah. so every person who thought they were faithful responsible and productive said to call themselves a man on top you see that was the sale the idea yes. Yes. in terms of the title yes. the cover really was purely 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 about getting people to pick up the book especially the ladies yes. i think it worked <laughs> uh -huh. yes. let's talk about the back of the book mm -hmm. there's a man with a before we go there there's a man in front of the book you mm -hmm. have a guy wearing shades yeah okay so what was the concept behind a man wearing a shirt mm. you know in relation to you know the book it's why did you put a guy wearing shades mm -hmm. yes first of all other than the fact that it was a good image yes i was really thinking about the future mm -hmm. where you are going as a young man yeah but also it needed to be somebody who is young and trendy and funky yes, yes. you know so that the younger people uh, can pick up the book and see themselves in mm. it Every young man wants to be nice and cool and trendy and have some big muscles. Some of us think we have muscles, but uh, until you take off your shirt, you know. Uh, but I think this model actually looks a bit like you. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the yeah. back of the book. Mm -hmm. We're talking about fostering creativity for business success. I mean, Jeremy has an example and we have it here. Uh -huh. Let's talk about the back of the book. The back of the book really was, I, I just picked an excerpt of a, a, a comment that my pastor, who was, my, who is, who was uh, the guy who wrote the foreword of the book, yes. and put it there. Mm -hmm. Just information that can give people a quick snapshot of what is inside the book. Yes. But also because he's a very influential person, if yeah. he endorses the book, yeah. it's very possible that people will pick it up and yeah. say, oh, if he has endorsed this book, it must be really good. Yes. And then a little bit of a profile about myself. Yeah, that's really And you didn't put the whole CV. Normally people put the whole CV of what you have done no. and all this stuff. No. That right there is what is a perfect definition of using fostering creativity yeah. within self, mm -hmm. okay, within the work you are doing mm. for success of this book. How many copies of these books have you sold, by the way? Wow, I have sold about 900 copies. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I originally printed a thousand. Yeah. Then somebody told me, oh, I found a big market for you in one of these big churches in Kampala. Can you print more? And I went and printed 1,500 yes. and that deal died. <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself with so many books. Yes. So one day I just made a decision to sell three books every day yeah. on Facebook. Wow. So I'd go to Facebook, look at my friends who are online. Yeah. And just start to ch chat with them and say, hey, how are you? What? Have you read my book? Man yes. on top. No, yes. I haven't. Hey, can I get a copy? Yes. Then I gave I gave the stash of the books to a border border man friend of mine yes. in Kampala. Yes. So every time somebody would order a book, I'll just send him the name, the location, and the number. And the border guy would deliver. And the border guy would deliver and he would send me the money and then I would pay him. Wow. That's how I was able to. But I still have about 600 books still yes. in my stash at home. Wow. Yeah. So you are, there you have it right there. Talking to Jeremy Bermanzi. If you haven't read Jeremy's book, please make it a point to find a copy of this book and read it. I, we just wanted to use this book as the measure of, you know, of an example of what we're talking about here. That when we're talking about fostering creativity for business change or for business success, you have got to go through what Jeremy has gone through to have a book. That's a, an example of uh, a personal product mm. that you put out there for people to actually go about it. 900 copies sold, 600 copies remaining. Let's see how many of you can pick this book from Jeremy. In fact, I want to buy for two people. Unfortunately, we are not able to read your comments today. We're not able to see your comments today because our back-end system is not bringing your messages to us. But we definitely promise that we're going to read some of these comments and respond to you, uh, you know, next week on the show. But I want to give two guys. Let's see what is the most interesting thing that Jeremy has said on this show that you actually deserve to have a book from him. Send a message to me, send a comment up there and we'll be able to, and your contacts and everything. The one with the best recap of what Jeremy has discussed in the last two weeks of being on Creative Industry Talk, you'll win yourself a copy of this book. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, you want to give the second one? Tell me which one should give. I'll buy the book. Mm -hmm. I'll give it out. But what do you want them to get to do to get the book? I, I think it would be great to get one person who can 
pick out one of the things I've said in the past two weeks or in the last week yes. and say what they have done about it. Yes. Yeah, especially from last week. What have you done since last week's show uh -huh. on based on what I said? Yes. And we can pick one of wow. those. Wow, so there you have it. Two books ready to go and of course we want to say jeremy thank you so much for coming here we always say spread the love we haven't yeah. done this. we're spreading the love to yeah. everyone out there mm -hmm. and we're saying thank you very much we've been discussing fostering you know creativity or foster how to foster creativity for business success going forward until next week creative industry has come to an end it is said if a man doesn't think that man is a super failure in life but also it says every time you think fast you will always defeat your enemies before they catch up with you or before they caught up with you or before they catch up with you. Whichever the way you would like to put it, that is something I want to leave you with. Creative Industry Talk, Edio Killer, Jeremy Biamanzi, signing out.